Well, hi, guys. It's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Now, look, I know I don't look awesomely made up. I'm doing some pretty deep cleaning today. I'm getting ready for some company that's coming into town. So uh, I'm just going to hop on here. And, yes, I know I'm late, but I want to post something today. And what I've been praying about and spending time with God about is I want to talk to you about the most well-known scripture in all of the time of all history and even right now in all of the world, and it's John 3.16. It's uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And actually the Greek says his only unique born son, born son. Uh, so that in order everyone believing in him may not perish or be lost, okay, but might have eternal life. Now what I want to make sure I point out here is that and I read this in the disciples' literal New uh, Testament. That word believe is actually a verb, and they, they hit it on this. It says everyone believing, that is constantly moving with and believing in and following Jesus. It is not a sinner's prayer. Okay, it is, guys, I'm telling you, that's what's wrong right now with the body of Christ. We have been mistaught by an apostate religious system that all we have to do is tell God we're sorry. We say a sinner's prayer, which, by the way, Jesus did not teach. None of his apostles taught that, and it is not in your New Testament. There is not a sinner's prayer in your Bible, okay? Jesus said you must be born again. And then Paul writes that we must confess with our lips that Jesus is our Lord. Okay, so believing is an action verb meaning that what you believe, you have uh, actions that follow what you say you believe, okay? See, people will say they're Christians, but they don't live like they're a Christian. That's not believing in Jesus, okay? So uh, we've been mistaught this, okay? And now everybody's like, aren't you getting picky? Aren't you just getting... No, I'm trying to keep people from dying and going to hell. That's what I'm trying to keep people from doing, is to be lied to, uh, manipulated and deceived in believing that you get a get out of hell free card by giving God some cheap apology because God is not fixing to fall off of his throne if mankind or any one of the people that he created doesn't apologize to him our apology is not what's needed what God has to have from you is for you to leave the kingdom of darkness and translate over into kingdom of light. And the only way that that can happen is what Jesus said in John chapter 3. He said, you must be born again. You must be born. Look, a child of Satan is not getting into the kingdom of God. It is not going to happen. And a sinner's prayer is not going to get you a party pass. It's not happening, guys. I'm telling you, that is a lie. And I want you to hear my heart here. We must be born again. Jesus said it. And in that, he said that you would be born of the Spirit. So here's how, what I taught the last uh, couple of times. You make Jesus your Lord. You confess with your mouth that Jesus is my Lord. You have to let him into your life. Jesus, I want you to come into my life and be Lord of my life. And I submit to you. And I commit to obeying and doing everything that you've taught. I'm going to walk like you, talk like you, think like you, and I'm going to represent the kingdom of God. So you get born again, and you get a new spirit. Give me the new spirit. Jesus, you said I could make you my Lord, and when I make you my Lord, then you will give me a new spirit, and I want my new spirit. Then you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, so you've got your new spirit, and Holy Spirit comes in and lives with you. And what he will do is teach you and guide you in how to become more like Jesus. Your part in that is to start believing and living what Jesus said. And you start renewing your mind, okay? You become transformed by the renewing of your mind. So your part is fixing this stinking thinking, Holy Spirit's part is making it come alive in you so that you metamorphosize and change, okay? Now, what I want to talk about is uh, John 3.16 today about eternal life. Did you know uh, we are eternal beings, okay, and we were created to have eternal life. Eternal life was being like God and being with God, okay? Eternal death is eternal separation from God 
that godlike life, okay? So in the end, what we're going to see here, how it rolls out, everybody is eternal, okay? But you get to choose if you are going to be eternally alive, eternal life, have eternal life, or if you're going to choose to have eternal death. I've taught this in the past. The, the word death means to be separated, okay? See, when someone dies, what happens is their spirit and soul, their spirit man, we are a spirit with a soul living in a body. When our bodies get broke down enough that our spirit man cannot live in that body anymore, it separates, and that's what we call death. When we say a person has died, that means the person's spirit and soul has separated from their body. Okay, so we can choose right now, when it, before you get born again, see, right now we're alive in our body, our spirit, soul, and body. We're alive in that, so we're not separated. But here's the thing. When we die, we separate from our body. And when our spirit and soul separates, we will go to the place that we are the most like, okay? Eternal life means to be eternally with God, the giver of life, okay? Or we will suffer eternal death. That means eternal separation from God. Right now, we have a choice we can make if we want to be in the kingdom of darkness or the kingdom of light. And to get born again and get a new spirit and you become a Holy Spirit, Spirit-filled believer, you become looking like Jesus. And when you start looking like Jesus, you have eternal life. That means eternally bonded and to be with God. People who are not born again, they are eternally separated. They have eternal death. They're eternally separated from God. Okay, so I want to show you what Jesus said that eternal life was. You know it's not a sinner's prayer, right? Okay, because people think, I can say a sinner's prayer, apologize to God, I get my little get out of hell free card, okay, and I have eternal life. That is not eternal life. Right here, I'm going to read it to you. It says, and this is eternal life, that they may be knowing, that's a verb, Okay, that it means a continual relationship moving with eternally, eternal life is knowing you, the one only true God, and Jesus Christ, the Messiah, whom you sent forth. Eternal life is to know and to continue to know and to be in a relationship with God the Father and with Jesus Christ. That is what Jesus said eternal life is. So for, and it makes sense. Look, how can you be eternally with someone that you don't even know? You sent them a, 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 an apology in the mail. I'm sorry that, you know, I made you mad, and that's the end of it. And you just keep living the way you were living. And then you're just going to go and live with God when your body and your spirit and soul separate. You're going to go live with someone you don't even know. No, you're going to go where your spirit is the most like. You're going to go to the kingdom that you belong in. You will either be in the kingdom of his dear son and the kingdom of light, the kingdom of God, or you're going to go be in the kingdom of Satan and the kingdom of darkness. And guys, it's really that simple. So I have eternal life because I know my father and I know Jesus. And it's not like I know about him. No, I know him. He is in my life every day. See, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord of my life in every way, every day. And that, my friends, is what it means to be a true born-again believer filled with the Spirit, walking out, being, and becoming more like Jesus, being a son of God. Well, God bless you, and I'm going to hop off here, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.